Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Big Questions. We're in Cambridge at the Post School. I'm Nicky Campbell. Right, Christianity, or the lack of it, has hit the headlines. Well, nearly every day this week at the Vatican, Baroness Vasi attacked militant secularism. The Queen weighed in. She defended the Church of England's role in national life. And on the radio, Richard Dawkins appealed to God. Our first big question, is Britain a Christian country? Professor Dawkins says we overestimate the number of Christians in Britain and give the faith too much influence in public life. There is still a huge gap between the number of people who need a life-saving organ transplant and the number of organ donations each year. Three people a day die on the waiting list. So, the British Medical Association is asking for a, a debate about previously contentious, even illegal methods of increasing the supply of organs. Our second big question, should it be easier to harvest organs for transplant. Sue Burton's son's organs saved or improved the lives of at least six people, but she thinks the new proposals for more active intervention are concerning. Welcome everybody to The Big Questions. <laughs> well, back in 2001, when the last census, uh, the last published census was taken, 71% of us declared ourselves to be Christians. Yet we know the churches are pretty empty on Sunday mornings. A new survey published this week by the Richard Dawkins Foundation found that the majority who call themselves Christian do not actually practice the faith in any meaningful sense. Is Britain a Christian country? And uh, uh, Richard, um, your foundation, it was an Ipsos Mori uh, poll and it polled people who put Christian on the, on the census. Um, but what was interesting about it is, to, to a greater or lesser extent, whether it be sort of evangelical or all the way through to vague belief, 78% uh, said that they believed in God. That, that's quite high, isn't it? Uh, the poll that we commissioned was done by Maury, uh, which, as you know, is a very respectable mm. uh, organization, and um, so it should be attributed to, to Maury rather than, to, rather than to, to us. The first thing that the poll showed was that the number of people who call themselves Christian has dropped from 72%, I think it was, in the 2001 census, to 54% now. And the margin of error might be plus or minus two when the final census figures comes out. So that's already a dramatic drop in the number of people who call themselves Christian. What was more uh, interesting in a way was when we looked further at what those 54%, remember we now wiped out all the, all the people who don't call themselves Christian at all. Mm -hmm. These are the census Christians, we call them the census Christians. When, when we look at them, even they are not in many cases really Christian in the sense that most of the Christians here would, for example, recognize, I suspect. And of course they're absolutely free to call themselves Christian if they wish. Totally free country, you can label yourself anything you like. What worried us, and what still worries us, is that if you label yourself Christian, then the numerical strength that you add to the Christian figure may then be used by a much narrower constituency mm -hmm. of Christian who will then argue, oh well, the country is so and so many percent Christian, therefore we need bishops in the House of Lords and so on. So I, I want to dispel a misunderstanding which is that we're not telling Christians you are or, or, or are not a true Christian. It's up to you whether you're a true Christian. But beware of using the ammunition of the percentage number of Christians, even though it's now dropped from 72 to 54. Mm -hmm. Beware of using that figure as ammunition for pushing through really strong, narrowly defined Christian uh, values when the number, of, when most of the people, or a large majority of the people who tick themselves Christian actually don't support those Christian measures. Um, <laughs> but if they say they're Christian in some sense, whether it be and it's a, you know, it's a broad church, isn't it, Richard? Literally. It's a very broad church, Literally. that's the but point. If, but if, yeah. if they, I know, I understand what you're saying, mm. but if they say whether, whether it be evangelical or vague, you know, Christians, and it's not what we have in this country. We have a kind of a gentle Christianity. I mean, it's exactly. not a theocracy. It's not no. a is it a danger to that's our? That's the precise point that we're trying to, yeah. to make. That if you boldly ask people on the census, "Are you Christian?" Mm. then you embrace this broad church of people who say, "Oh well, I feel I'm a good person. I better tick the Christian box." 
Well, that's insulting to Muslims and Jews, for a start. So how it's is that informing policy in a detrimental and dangerous and, and it's, it's, way? It forms policy because time and again, politicians after the last census have justified Christian policies, Christian-inspired policies, and things like the 26 reserved seats for bishops in the House of Lords by saying, oh, well, the 2001 census showed that 72% of the country is Christian. We must respect them. Of course we must respect their right to call themselves Christian, but why not ask them whether they support bishops in the House of Lords? And they don't. Or the resurrection, or the virgin or birth, the, or and all... The, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Cole Morton, this, yeah. I mean, quite a lot of... There have been strong words this very week strong during words. this very debate. And, and uh, Baroness Vasi last week referring to... Uh, mil this week, militant secularists saying they're deeply intolerant, using words like, you know, Stalinist and, and totalitarian. Uh, you've called Richard, in your book, the, the Ayatollah of atheism. Not, not sure if you were aware of that, Richard. Why is Sorry. the slightest challenge, and the slightest, quite, not even a challenge, but a question? Research, indeed. Research seen as militant. No, I, I'm absolutely right. I, I will let Baroness Vasi fight, fight in the way that she does, and, that, and that's fine. In relation to what I said in the book, that was in reaction to a specific uh, moment that uh, I, I saw, I, I've seen uh, Professor Dawkins behave in a way that seems to me to be very uh, similar to the way that I've seen religious fundamentalists perform in, in meetings and in, in the way they conduct themselves in public. And I want, I'm, you know, perhaps that was over the top in the book, but actually the point is that he, I, I, I'm sorry, Professor, I think you're a brilliant scientist, but I think you let yourself down by behaving like a fundamentalist, and I find that distressing. When was the but last I, time I, I just, threw a bomb? Can I? Well, well, I'll get to you in a minute, Richard. Can I? He can asked, I, when was the last time he threw a bomb? Well, uh, rather we, than an intellectual but, bomb. But can we, yeah. can we talk about the, the, the survey? Yeah. You, you, the, you, your introduction said that, that, that these people did not practice Christianity in a meaningful way. It was meaningful enough for them to put down on the form that they were Christian. Now, on the, on the basis of a poll that I think is a thousand people, Professor Dawkins is dismissing as largely irrelevant, and those are the words that he used, the, the, the belief system of, uh, by his uh, statistics, more than half the population. Now, we're, we, the, what else the, the poll shows is that we are still a nation, whether or not we're a post-Christian, post-imperialist nation, mm -hmm. whether we're throwing off the kind of Christianity that dictated us for 500 years and finding a new way forward in a multi-faith world, we're still a, a, a country that very firmly and emphatically has some kind of engagement and fascination with God and with spirituality. Um. W wasn't that exactly what I said? No. You feel an engagement with, with Christianity, so you tick the Christian box. Absolutely fine. I feel a good person, so I'm going to tick the Christian box. But when we went on to say, when you are faced with a moral dilemma, do you turn to your religion for moral guidance? Only 10% said yes. Mm. So the, the whole point is that the people who tick the Christian box entirely welcome to tick the Christian box. Of course they are, I'm not denying them that, that, that right. But don't use those figures to justify much narrower Christian policies when you come to make government decisions. That's all we're saying. More of which, more of which in a minute, Christina. I, I, but I, did, the, the, I want you to address this, this tag of militancy, uh, you know, uh, uh, and because there's a little bit of a backlash towards you. And there's a, it calls nothing to do with it, but there's an article in The Telegraph this morning They've done a kind of who do you oh, think yeah. you are on you, yeah. and they find out that one of your great 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 whatever ancestors was a slave owner, and they've gone ah. <laughs> you would be <laughs> amazed at what's been going on this week, um, uh, one after another. I mean, this this one in the, in the Telegraph is just the uh, just the latest. I really feel we're rattling their cages. When you feel the need, when a Telegraph reporter feels the need to retaliate by going back 300 years to an ancestor of mine, I think he was my great-great-great-great-great-grandfather who owned slaves in Jamaica. I mean, how desperate can you get if instead of listening to the arguments you say, oh, his great-great-great-great-great-grandfather owned knowledge, slaves? To the best of my knowledge, this is neither a smear tactic nor a retaliation for anything. It was a story that somebody found out and they printed it in the paper. I, I, I'm not involved in that story and I can't comment on yeah. it, but to the best of my knowledge, there is no sense of a smear tactic or retaliation. No, but there. I have to admit, working for the Telegraph as I do... Oh, um, the Telegraph was, on oh, trial. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. We were rather amused by the fact that Professor Dawkins um, has often talked about how um, religion enslaves humanity 
And, um, and it was interesting to see that he comes from a family that used to enslave people too. But so that, that was what prompted the article then? Uh, well, no, I don't yes. think that that's what yes. prompted it. Yes. I'm but, but, saying but, that it was amusing but, when we discovered. But Christina, we're all more related to each other in this, in this room than he I is know, to that ancestor. Richard's my brother, actually. <laughs> 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 but, but if you want to think about, you know, this is a political debate yeah. as well as a religious one, and, and Rich has made that point very mm. powerfully. Mm. These figures are being used in a political way. Is this a Christian and, country, Jonathan? Well, I'll come back to that. One second, just make a point about the slavery issue, because yeah. Bishop, Bishop of Rochester, you know, spoken out in yeah. defense of the Christian country by yeah. saying, look, we abolished the slave trade, forgetting, of course, that bishops were, uh, well, the, the, uh, one of the agencies of the Church of England was branding slaves. Bishops were supporting the commercial trade. And I think what we've got, <laughs> what we've got is a situation where neither side in this debate is being realistic about the history, yeah. accepting the mistakes of the past, recognizing that religion had a good part to play, but also a terrible part yeah. to play, and so did secularism as well. Is this a Christian country? This Christian uh, this country has never been a Christian country. I don't think it is oh, now. Jonathan, in terms of, well, it, let's take our, our definition controversially as the values and of Jesus Christ. And Why don't we? And you're a is Christian. Is this country really endorsing the values of Jesus Christ? Come on. What would it look like were it to endorse the values of Jesus Christ? Oh, well, we might forgive our enemies a little bit more. <laughs> uh, we might have a more equal society. We might not uh, encourage a capitalist system which you know, makes people compete against each other and work more quickly. Christina Adonio. I think it's a Christian country and it should stay a Christian country. Why what is it do you Christian? Mean by, by, that? by Christian country, I mean that everything from the language we use every day comes from the Bible. Um, the church we walk past on our street is a, is a part of the Christian culture. Um, charity, all, the, all, all kinds of institutions from hospitals to orphanages to schools were founded by churches. So our culture is definitely a Christian culture. That's now, religious, whether, Christina, whether, but not necessarily on. Christian. Let's take, you know, That's or, part of our, let's our take the identity. Hymn, you know, the rich man in his castle, the poor man at his gate, the Lord God made them uh, high and lowly, each to his estate, was an endorsement of, of medieval feudalism. It was an endorsement of you know, keeping inequality as it is. But that's, that's not, not God-given. Christian. That's, that's religious. But that's not but God-given. Yes, Christian. that was written by a Victorian lady. Yes, and it was an expression of her values. It was, it was an expression of religious values, but I would say not Christian values. But and we need to make Jonathan, a huge distinction between the two, because the two are not the same. But Jonathan, I think that, as I said, we have a culture that is Christian. And it, it comes in, what, what, what completely um, confounded Richard Dawkins was that he thought we were textbook Christians. You know, that we knew um, which was the first book in the Bible. We knew uh, what the first five books of the Old Testament were called. No, that's not the kind of Christians we are. We are everyday Christians. It, it informs our every life. And it means that we do believe in charity and we do believe in helping others. And we do believe in turning the other cheek much, much more than if we were a, a totally secularist culture. Um, Richard? I, 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 di I didn't think anything. I asked Ipsos Mori to find out research. Research uh, is, actually... is not... Pre preconception. Yeah, Andrew. I mean, actually, British that's humanist, so, yeah. actually that's not what the research shows at all. It doesn't show that people live their lives as if Christianity is the cultural wallpaper. It, mm. it shows quite the opposite. It shows that although they tick Christian as a sort of cultural box, and the most commonly given reason in the survey was because their parents were religious or because they were Christians, so it's a sort of heritage attachment. Actually, Christianity forms very little um, of the of the common sense of their lives. Well, can it's I not, can I put it not, to David? Not, that's can, what, can, can I, I call in a second? I most, this people, is important. For, most people, for example, can I put the David Cameron quote to you because then you can run okay. with this, <laughs> if I may. Uh, five minutes. He said recently. He, said, he described Britain just as just as just yeah. that, a Christian country. Yeah. And he said, the Bible has helped give Britain a sense of values that has made uh, Britain what it is today. Mm. What do you think of that statement? Well, I think that Christianity has contributed to the formation of culture in this country, but it's not uh, the only factor that has contributed. Pre, you know, it depends when you start the story. Of course, if you start the story at when this country became Christian, Christianity lies ago. at the beginning. If you started earlier, you're with the Romans and Greeks. If you start it later, you're with the secular enlightenment. So it's artificial and arbitrary to some extent where you start the story. Lots of influences have, have shaped us. Um, but I think the more interesting question is actually why politicians are suddenly seeming uh, to be breaking out all over saying that we're a Christian country. Um, and I think that that's, that, that that's the real question, when it's so self-evidently not the case. And unfortunately... Self-evidently not yeah, the case. Self-evidently is the case. Is the it self-evidently? Yes, is. It, it is. I think... That, let's bring the historical perspective in. We are at the end of a period of something like 500 years in which 
a, a kind of Christianity, a kind of British state Christianity, has informed who we are. Our laws, our language, our literature, our habits, our customs, our superstitions. That period, because of the way that the church and the state of the crown are, are, are pulling apart, and because of the way that our, our, our uh, population is changing, is coming to an end. And so people are asking, mm. well, what does it mean? What do we do? Do we throw that away? Do we keep it? Is there something about that that we can, we can have and but keep going with? It's a mere speck in the span of time, isn't it? Well, of course, but we're asking at the moment, is, is this country that we're living in I mean, informed by Christianity? Yeah. Does it have a residual? The Archbishop of Canterbury said we were haunted by Christianity, which I think is a good way of putting it. The question is where we go from here. But once it's lost its sort of grip on the minds and hearts of people in the country generally, I don't think that you should, we should be resorting to it. It's lost its grip, it hasn't lost its grip on the hearts and minds. It's totally lost its grip. That most people, well, not for according example, to Richard's own no, survey. Really? According specifically, yes, according, no, not according, according, according to, to your research. survey, Richard, 54% of the country still care enough to say I'm a Christian. But when you ask them what they believe, it turns out that it hasn't got it's to be. It's neither my place it. nor yours to confront what they believe. 54% yes, of the people, by your thousand person poll, which set out to prove that there were fewer Christians in the country than, there, than, than you it thought there were. It did not set out to do yeah, that. Of course you did. 54% of the country still cares enough to put down Christians. They, they care enough to put down Christians, but no. when you ask them what they actually believe, it turns out that it does not have a very large part, or hardly any part at all in many cases, in their Good, and I'm, and I'm happy to live in a country where, where the Christianity is ambiguous and generous so and allows for other faiths, and so where, is he. where God is worshipped and respected. So, so is he. Oh, my goodness me, I'm panicking. We've had an outbreak of consensus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we, can't, we can't be having well, any of that. Cole makes a really important point, and that's that we've got to move beyond oh, yes. this polarisation and actually say what do we want to hang on to yeah, and what do we want to you know, make new. Okay, let, that's, the, that's the important question. Yeah. Sorry, Jonathan, lady back there, let's hear from you. Are we, is this a Christian country? Um, well, I, my my personal belief is that um, this country is built on Christian values mm -hmm. and I think it's a very very beautiful aspect of this country I am a Muslim myself and I, there's something I value about this country but I don't think that people are necessarily Christian in terms of the technical details of that faith I think they have a general awareness or a belief in God Mm -hmm. And over here, was there anyone? Yeah. Yes, what would you like to say? Um, Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, I think we're talking, well, both sides really are talking Christianity in an incredibly um, practical way. Mm -hmm. And I don't think um, we're actually addressing the fact that we have a very moral country. And I think, especially the politicians at the minute, um, the Tories are using this as a, um, in light of the riots and things like that, as a sort of moral guidance that they want us to follow. Um, but although I don't like the Tories, um, I do think um, that, that our country isn't Christian in a practical way. We, you know, the Queen is our head of state, she's head of the Church of England, but realistically it's the government that leads us. We don't attend church, but I think people do still hold those values. Um, but I, then again, I think most religions offer those values. I think it's very much um, geographical, actually. I think that um, the Far East is incredibly moral, and that's, you know, whether that's because of Islam or whatever other religion. Okay. Um, I think it's definitely, it's not as practical well, as we're talking well, here. Well, those are interesting, interesting questions there, but th thank you for that. This, the whole idea, though, of this, this sort of slightly vague and uh, some say wishy-washy, but some say comfortable and gentle form of and Christianity tolerant. and tolerant, as Christina says we have in this country. If you look, I mean, Richard or Andrew to address this, if you look to, to France, you know, which, which is a, uh, oh, he's, Richard's passed through the battle, <laughs> which is, you know, avowedly secular and arguably, ha as a result, perhaps, of that even, has some pretty illiberal laws, you know, banning of the burqa, religious Completely symbols intolerant. and yes, so I mean, forth. Secularism. Those are very Ill Ill would, that not be a, would that not be a danger? Well, I think that you can, you can over-egg the extent to which Anglicanism really has led to tolerance. And it was a very hard, you know, ride, and they, it burnt itself out with persecution, well, literally burnt other people, but it sort of burnt itself out with persecution over the centuries and then eventually arrived at a sort of, you know, tolerant settlement. But I think that there are many other factors in this country that have led to that tolerant feeling. Um, a sort of uh, a long, long centuries without any particular uh, civil war or internal conflict, relative prosperity, of uh, the economic factors. Well, we've had civil war religion... in, this, in these islands in the last 30 years. Oh, well, OK, that's true. OK, so let's say England and Wales. <laughs> and, and, part, partly inspired by religion. Well, you no, know, because your question was about the Anglican yeah, Church, yeah, yeah. There, which okay. is only established in There was some Christianity um, in, in these islands, country. kind of. Yeah, well, but... there are many Christians in France as well, so that can't yeah. really be the dividing yeah. uh, factor. And indeed, the French state funds uh, uh, various uh, Catholic groups, even because of its secularism. Mm. My, my, my argument would, would be that, um, yes, this is a very tolerant country, and that's very much to be welcomed, but I think that the sort of things that uh, the establishment of the Church of England and the uh, artificially inflated Christian figure 
uh, preserves are far from mm. tolerant. That 72% figure, for example, as was used, mm. has been used to justify not just existing state-funded faith schools that discriminate, but an expansion of mm. them. And it's at the hard edge of political debate that that figure is used to actually inflict damage on other people. And that's the problem, and that's why the survey is important, because it shows that those people who are in that 72% or whatever it turns people out very to popular. be... They're very popular. A lot of people want to send their children to them. There's some of the specifics... Well, not the academically well, failing. Yeah, yeah, so no, no, no. Some of the specifics... I, yeah. I, I would not ban the burqa. That is, il that is illiberal. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The, the, yeah. Some of the specific questions on, on, on theology are, in are interesting as well. I'll, I'll come to you in a minute, Dr. Catmey, but I'm interested in this one. Rowan Williams quite recently said, you don't have to believe you know, in the virgin birth to be a Christian. No. Do you believe in it? Do I believe in yeah. it? Yeah. Well, uh, literally, not necessarily. Well, what does that mean, literally, not necessarily? <laughs> well, uh, you're, uh, you're identifying, me, uh, identifying me as a Christian, which is interesting. Did, did a virgin give birth 2,000 years ago to Jesus Christ? Was I she don't a virgin? know. I don't know, Nicky. No. I, know, I know that the Bible... Uh, does it matter? Does it matter to me personally in terms of the faith to be, that I might to, have? To be no, it doesn't. No, no. no it doesn't. Mm. I, I, I think um, that we are making an interesting move on, on the basis of what Andrew and, R and Richard were just saying. This week we've had a, a comment from, from the Queen who's, who's made a shift and has started to talk about the Church of England acting as a kind of broker, using its influence on, on the state, you know, th those things that are left of its influence in, in, in official circles, to become a kind of broker for people of all faiths. Now, actually, I think that's a, that's a valuable and a positive way forward, yes. possibly. It may be the only way forward the Church of England's got left. Do you believe in the virgin birth, Christina? I do. I do. Mm. I believe in miracles, too. Mm. And, um, do you have to believe in the virgin birth and the, the resurrection no, of Christ no. to be a and Christian? The, and, and the whole thing is that, you see, what is so interesting is that what... Richard and um, the, the, his fellow secularists want is for science to be the only guiding force. Well, a lot, for, a lot of religious us, people uh, are secularists. Well, so, yeah. and, 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 and for rationality and reason to be our God. But actually, what spirituality is, is, is a whole other dimension that we enter into and that you know, you don't. I don't care what you believe and what you say. You care what a great deal because about. you keep <laughs> polling us. What you I keep do, polling us and you keep I trying to play a numbers game. And if we were to play a numbers game, 7,000 members of the National Secular Society is just about as much oh, as Christina, the 7,000 members of the this. National no, British no, we, Sausage Appreciation Society. We all know so, that this is you know, political. Let's not let, <laughs> let's not let okay, the wait, wait, wait. drive Jonathan, the Jonathan, Jonathan, either. Richard, what we, remind Richard what he was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was just interrupted. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, it was the point. Uh, what, was, what was the point you were making? It was the point before that about I'm saying that it's not, not appreciating. Thing. Not appreciating. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't care what you believe, so long as what you believe is not used to legislate in this country and affect what the rest of us believe. I... Why do we have, why do we have 64, sorry, 26 places in, in Parliament reserved for bishops mm. of the Church of Nobody England? Knows, why not... Wait, let him finish. <laughs> Could I finish? <laughs> let him finish. Well, why not have 26 this places not, reserved sorry. for white men? This is an now, If you did that, if you did that, there would be outrage, and quite rightly, why do we have 26 places reserved for bishops of the Church of England? Do, what, do you what do you think about this, well, I don't know about the virgin birth or not? Do you think that's key to being a Christian? Do you think all those sort of fundamental it's, key... It's, it's up to them. What they, if they want to believe supernatural nonsense, that is up to them. But don't force it on the rest of us. <laughs> okay. What about you? you so Dr. Catmey, Dr. Yes. Cat, Dr. Cat uh, do you think this is a Christian country? Now, let me give you a, mus a Muslim perspective on what you ask. Right. I have been working for the last 30 years with hundreds of Christian organizations, pro-life, family, morality, chastity, marriage, heterosexual, etc. Why I work? Because this is my Islamic value, the same. We share together the same value. And this value are very few today implemented. What's going wrong? What's going I mean, I agree, I disagree a lot with Professor Richard Dawkins, but in this point, it's not Christian country. Christianity, ten commandments are broken day and night by a majority of Christians in Britain. We badly need to go to back to Christian value. Mm -hmm. And if you implement your Christian value, we have our Islamic value, the same, exactly like you. 
But in the same time, we believe, by the way... But you're talking about li licentiousness and depravity, and all those things, is that what course, you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. We believe in Virgin Mary, we believe in Jesus, we mm. believe in Ten Commandments, etc. Mm. A lot of potential, two million British Muslims to the Christian in Britain. But practically, we should be careful. Don't say just Christian country. We are practically multi faith country. We have many religions. Okay, okay, so, yeah. so, so we need to yeah. okay, be aware right, right, of that. Okay, right, come on. So two main points I want to make. First of all, it's important to remember that faith is a force for good. And I think it's often portrayed that, you know, there's always a chance of that there's something ex like just inherently kind of extremist about religion, so you have to actively moderate. That's not true. Now, secondly, the thing is, when you look at the poll that's been commissioned, that it says that people are not Christian according to this textbook definition. The thing is this, over time, there's been evolution of people's affiliation to their faith. Just because they did not tick the box according to what we may consider to be traditional, you know, um, mm -hmm. religious people does not mean that they are not religious. I mean, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. that they cared enough to tick the box, say, I am a Christian. So you cannot say that because they don't follow all the commandments, therefore you are not a Christian. It's like saying, like it's a very poor example, that on Radio 4, when they hooked you up, uh, uh, Professor Dawkins, that you couldn't pronounce the name of the book of uh, mm -hmm. Charles Darwin, yeah. that therefore you're not a good enough atheist. And that's wrong. Same thing, you can't do that to a Christian, saying just because you don't go to the church as regularly as it says so, therefore you are not a good enough Christian. That's incorrect. You cannot go down that route. People choose their values. And that's up to them. We can't say that's what makes you Christian, that's what makes you Muslim. Andrew? I mean, no one is saying that, just to clarify. I think no, the, the, the survey itself that Richard's Foundation did, that, that Maury did for Richard's Foundation... We're extrapolating the, from it at this no, point, no, though, no, what, what's being said is that after the 2001 census results were published and there was a very high proportion of Christians, lots of Christian lobby groups, lots of bishops, lots of politicians leapt upon those figures with glee and said, look, it proves what we've known all along. Britain is still a Christian country. It justifies faith schools. It justifies contracting out public services to Christian groups. It justifies this, that and the other. Now, what this research is attempting to articulate and demonstrate is that that was a mistaken assumption by those people because actually that 72% has been hijacked and what that 72% believes is not what it's being claimed to so, believe, so, but it's something else. So that's, that's the important so let's point. Say that, let's yeah. so, given everything that you say, does that mean that you want the state to take back from the religious institutions um, any work that they do with youth, any work that they do with um, uh, schools, any no. work that they do? No, so no. not. I think so that, so I think what, 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 is what is the point of doing this poll? Well, if, it wasn't. Michael, okay, Christina, Christina, what would, but if, this, if there were to be a sudden awakening of atheism and also secularism, two different things, yeah. what would we lose? I think we would lose a great, great deal because we would lose in the public space. We don't want just the government to be dealing with um, running schools, with running charities. With we want voluntary spirits, and many of them these faith schools are, are state Christian. funded. These faith schools are state yes, funded. They're not many voluntary. Them, They're no, government funded no, schools. But many of them aren't, and what we yeah. don't well, want. No to problem have with them. No problem with that. It's, yeah. it's the state funded ones, which are a third of all our state funded schools. And but but are you going to have? Are you going to have um, state funded? Charities? Are you going to have state funded um, uh, hospitals? Are you going to only have secularism? State secularism doesn't affect the thriving civil sphere. We already know, have that, charities. That, that's fine. It affects what, what's funded by the state in our public life, which should be, you know, treat people without privilege or discrimination on the basis of religion. If there are state funded schools, they shouldn't be choosing uh, pupils actually. on the basis oh, of let, religion. Let me come to this lady down here. Yeah. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Uh, I, I, first question you asked is that this country is a Christian country. Yeah. What well, I believe, if you are buying Christmas presents and Easter eggs, yes, it is a Christian country. <laughs> well... Uh, this, yes, it is a Christian country, but when it comes to moral issues, I'm sorry, it is not. Uh, what I believe is that our government professor's research could be actually used as a positive manner, mm -hmm. thinking that, yes, we are failing as a Christians and we need to upgrade. Now, every time there's a wedding or marriage take place, I think that should be actually applauded rather than discriminated against tax. I think family, should be, family life should be encouraged. Uh, abortions and single parenting should be discouraged and help people to stay within marriage. It's, create a stable family, okay. which Jonathan, actually Christianity supports. Is this your view of Christianity? 
I think a slightly different view of Christianity, but I think the important thing is we have the conversation about it. And what worries me is while we have this polarization, we don't get a sensible conversation. So let's discuss. You know, would it be good to give tax breaks to married couples? I don't think so. I would like to see tax breaks to civil partnerships. I'd like to see uh, people be able to, you know, heterosexuals to be engaged so in civil partnerships and, and gay people be allowed to get married. I think that's a tolerant Christian view. But you cannot have a Christian country and have a faith, faith, uh, faith oriented country when you have a civil partnerships and you're encouraging uh, X, Y, Z. I'm sorry, I do not want me, to discriminate to what, against what is a, anybody. What but is a Christian view of government? What is a Christian view of the state? And to me, it is one that allows for plurality, uh, effectively a secular one, which is not value free, but doesn't impose any one religious form uh, on, on the nation. And surely that's what a, you know, a, a, the best religious view uh, uh, is of all. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, absolutely. I, th I think we are in a position where we, we will have to find a way forward that allows for plural... plural I can't even say the word. We have a thousand gods instead of one. Actually, actually, you know, Richard, we don't have no god. We have a thousand gods instead of one in this country. We need to find a way forward to allow that to be and to celebrate that. Nobody really believes that there should be 26 bishops in the House of Lords these days. We've got to change Why that. Why do we have them? Can, can I finish? But what we do have to find a way forward, a way forward that reflects the fact that Britain is still fascinated by God. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I still need to go. No, but Nikki, there is a point. That we, there, I've been debating with a number of people this week that do believe there should be 26 <laughs> bishops in the House of Lords, do believe that church schools should be able to discriminate in admissions and employment, and I think that does need to be challenged. I think we need to be honest about that. And there are religionists who are, you know, need to be there called are, to account, as well as there are secularists well, who need to be called well, to account. What, what interests me is that there are religionists on one side, there are atheists on the other side. There are, by Richard's uh, uh, estimation, 30 million people sitting in the middle, scratching their heads, watching this programme, <laughs> and going, mm, what about us? 30 million? I wish. <laughs> uh, Richard, you've finally you've said uh, faith is a spent force in the UK. Do you think the trends are very much the, um, you know, religion is, is slowly crawling into the dustbin of history? Do you yeah, think? I think so. I mean, and actually showing some signs of desperation. I mean, when, when you think that what, what faith actually is, is believing something without evidence, how can you possibly justify no, believing no, something know. without evidence? Uh, if, it's, if there is evidence, it's not faith anymore. It's evidence. It's what people who believe in science believe in. What percentage um, of the universe don't you know anything about these days? I can't remember. A, a very great 94%? deal. A very great deal. And I don't say, therefore, I believe so and so. I say, I'm waiting to find out. We're working on it. So we need more, more, more research. Journey. So do Christians. Then why do you have faith in things like the virgin birth in the resurrection. Richard. I'm glad you don't, but well, many do. I do, um, and I... Uh, Richard... We do. We do. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> How can you justify believing something well, which there's no evidence? I tell you, Richard, because I believe in the resurrection, and yeah. the reason is it offers me a hope of the future and a vision. And actually, it shapes my ethics. And I come to similar conclusions in some areas to you because of my faith. You get there by a different route. Okay. And we disagree on some things because okay. I come a different well, route. that's very but revealing. it's important to respect that. That's very revealing. You believe something because it gives you hope. Nikki, sorry, sorry. My case rests. We are going to leave it there. Listen, thank you all so much for taking part. Thank you. In that particular debate. Now, if you'd like to have your say about that debate, log on to bbc.co.uk slash the big questions. You'll find links to continue the conversation online. We're also debating live this morning from the Perth School in Cambridge. Should it be easier to harvest organs for transplant? And also, if you'd like to be in the audience at a future show, you can email audiencetbq at menton.tv. We are in Cardiff next week. Then on March the 4th, we're in York to record two shows. And we're in Leicester on the 18th of March.